Alaska is huge. In fact, it's over 20% of the size of the entire lower 48 states. And that can be kind of overwhelming if you're trying to plan an RV trip. So in this episode, we'll take you to five of our favorite places that we visited while we were RVing through Alaska in 2019 and show you why they are some must visit spots for your trip. We're Howard and Caitlin Newstate, dog people, food people, adventure people. We've been jet setting and road tripping for over two years. Our passion is sharing the amazing, wonderful, and sometimes challenging parts of our life on the road with you. Taking you off the beaten path, meeting incredible people, and trying new things. Each week, we bring you along with us to experience all the amazing places our little home on wheels takes us. Last week, we shared our top 10 11. tips for RVing through Alaska. But now it's time to show off some more of the beautiful things and places that we experienced. From amazing scenery to wildlife to delicious food, Alaska has it all. To give context to our recommendations, we travel in a 2019 Winnebago Navion 24D, which is just over 25 feet long, and we do have a tow vehicle. And we're not necessarily saying you have to have a tow vehicle and many people do travel to Alaska without one. But for us, it allowed us to explore some of the more rugged areas that you wouldn't normally be able to access with an RV. Now, to be clear, none of the locations in this video we would consider to be inaccessible to an RV. First up, Seward. We loved visiting this city. It's a port city about two hours south of Anchorage on the Kenai Peninsula, and it's a gateway city to Kenai Fjords National Park and there is a ton of camping. Basically, the entire coastline of the city is split into multiple campgrounds. Now, we stayed in the Resurrection Campground, which was $20 a night for dry camping. They also have sites with water and electric for $40 a night. Now, camping here is basically a parking lot, but what you lack in curb appeal, well, it's made up by the epic views of the bay and the mountains. Plus, the eagle sightings are totally worth it. Now, let's talk about the incredible national park that's here. Kenai Fjords is a bit unique because it's best viewed by the water. So booking a boat tour is the way to go. We found a boat tour company that actually had a national park ranger on board to narrate the tour and answer questions. We took a five hour tour that included lunch. Including which, <laughs> unlimited prime rib. Which was delicious. And we saw tons of birds and seals and absolutely breathtaking scenery. One area of Kenai Fjords National Park that is accessible by car is the Exit Glacier area. We're gonna go see a glacier. I don't know the name of it. Exit Glacier. Exit Glacier. <laughs> That's great material, isn't it? We hiked to the viewing point for Exit Glacier on the Overlook Trail, which was a relatively easy hike. If you're feeling extra adventurous, you can hike the Harding Icefield Trail to the top of the glacier. Now, since we did the Overlook Trail in the morning before our boat trip, we didn't really have a lot of time, but the hike is beautiful. And a great thing about Seward is that you can walk around the marina and then head up to the docks where the fishermen and women are bringing in all of their catches of the day. And this is so fun to watch because they're filleting the fish right there in front of you. And these fish are enormous. <laughs> Next on our list is the unique town of Whittier. Now, this has been claimed to be the most isolated town in the United States, and with good reason. During World War II, Whittier was actually a supply station for the U.S. troops stationed in Alaska. And the only way to access it is through a two and a half mile tunnel that alternates on a strict schedule. So if you miss the cutoff going into or out of the city, you'll have to wait a while like we did. And if you miss the last outbound time slot, you could find yourself spending the night there. Another interesting fact is nearly all of Whittier's 280 residents live in one apartment building. And inside that building is the town's post office, general store, hospital, police department, even the mayor's office. It's totally a one-stop shop if you actually live in this town. We did a quick drive around the city, which included seeing the abandoned Buckner building, which is former military housing that eventually shut down in the late 60s. But the highlight of our time in Whittier was actually hiking the Portage Pass Trail to a beautiful lake that's accented by Portage Glacier. All uphill the first mile. The hike itself was challenging, and the initial climb is definitely the hardest part. It's four and a half miles out and back, but the reward is definitely worth it. We even got to take Piper and Ella. Since this trail is located in a national forest, it's dog friendly. The trailhead is located just inside of Whittier, past the tunnel. So plan your entrance and exit accordingly. Otherwise, it could be a long wait for the next exit. We'll have a link to the tunnel schedule on our website, and you can find that in the resources section of the description below. 
Number three on our list is Valdez, and while this town is most known for two tragedies that struck there, the Good Friday earthquake of 1964 and the Exxon Valdez oil spill in 1989, it's also a great place for fishing, camping, eating, and exploring. The history here is both fascinating and sad, but it's definitely worth a visit. There are actually two locations to the Valdez Museum and Historical Archive, and the $9 entrance fee grants you access to both. Now one location is solely focused on the history of the old town site and the 1964 earthquake which badly damaged the town and took the lives of 32 people. This museum site also has a model replica of the town and shows several videos with interviews of locals who lived through the quake. We spent about three hours exploring both of the museums and they are definitely worth the admission price. One of our favorite things to do in the town of Valdez was just walk around. It doesn't take too long to walk around the waterfront shops and restaurants and get a lay of the land and this is a great opportunity to snap some beautiful pictures. We learned a lot at the two museums that we visited, but if you're looking for a more entertaining, comical way to learn about the history of the town, check out The Vaudeville Show. Written and performed by locals with the perfect amount of comedy, history, fantastic fantastic acting and cheeky humor, we thought it was extremely well done. Admission at the time was only 15 bucks for two people. Single tickets are $18. It was worth every penny for an evening of entertainment. Valdez is also home to several of the seafood processing and canning centers, which employ lots of people during the season. We stopped by one and picked up delicious crab legs at very reasonable prices. I love a good crab. We've come to number four on our list, and we can't talk about Alaska without talking about Denali National Park. This is unlike any national park we've ever visited before. Yeah, there's only about 38 miles of formal trails inside the park. So we're walking along, and we've already seen three beavers so far on this trip. Pretty cool. So backcountry or wilderness hiking is actually strongly encouraged and you can do it on your own. But hiking in the wilderness, especially in bear country, can seem intimidating if you've never done it before, which I hadn't. I it could be a caribou, but it looks much like a moose to me. We recommend signing up for one of the ranger-led discovery hikes. You must sign up for these in advance at the visitor center. They only take a small group of people. You'll board a bus early in the morning and then meet up with your ranger. They drove us about an hour and a half into the park, literally dropped us off on the side of the road and off we went. First thing I need to do is call in to dispatch them know where we're at and what's gonna happen. 700, did I like 418, follow hike plan. This was an excellent way to get a feel for what it's like to do backcountry hiking with someone who is experienced. They are technically edible. If you wanna try them, you can. Won't hurt you. Guinea pig, guinea pig, go. <laughs> hmm. Hi, it was definitely challenging at times, but truly incredible and gave us a greater appreciation for the amazing area that we were visiting. Most visitors to Denali never venture out into the wilderness, viewing the entire park from the bus. You must ride the bus if you want to venture past the first 15 miles of the park. The park road is 92 miles long, but passenger vehicles are only allowed on those first 15 miles during most of the year. Another great thing to do, which I absolutely loved while you're in Denali, is visit their dog sled team. Every year they raise and train a litter of sled dogs, and in the summertime you can actually visit the kennels and watch an awesome demonstration. The rangers are very knowledgeable and this was such a cool thing. Denali has had sled dogs since 1922, and the teams are actually still used today by rangers to access and manage the park in those brutal Alaska winters. I feel like we've saved the best for last, China Hot Springs. Whether you're visiting in the summer or the winter, it's a one-stop shop for Alaska adventure. It's located about 60 miles northeast of Fairbanks, and there is a campground on site. It's $20 a night for dry camping, but they do have water and a dump station. There are spaces for RVs of all types and sizes, and if you're a smaller rig like us, try to grab one right along the river. Pool passes are not included with camping, but they're only $15 a day, and that's for unlimited in and out privileges at the pools. And the hot springs are excellent and quite popular with the local wildlife, like moose. The world's largest year-round ice environment is located at China Hot Springs, and you can take a 45-minute tour. It was completed in 2005 from over 1,000 tons of snow and ice that they harvested from the property. You can even have an apple teeny at their ice bar. <laughs> Cheers. 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 China employs several ice carving artists who continue to build new pieces while maintaining the rooms, bar, beds, and other amazing sculptures that keep trying to melt away. 
And depending on the time of year, there are other activities you can do in the summer and in the winter. They have a spa that offers massages. You can take tours of their kennels for their sled dogs and even go horseback riding. You can also do Northern Lights tours using something that kind of looks like a snow cat. And then they also have tours of their geothermal plant that's available several times a day and powers the entire facility. As we mentioned in the beginning, Alaska is huge and there are so many incredible things to experience, but we hope these five places will help you start your planning for this incredible state. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out our 10 tips 11. for our being to Alaska to further help with your planning. And there's more adventures on the screen right now. Remember to subscribe and click the bell so you get notifications when we post our newest videos every week. Thanks for watching. Bye.